Hey guys, this is Aaron. We had a very specific request come in. Someone asked us to help put a window into Rapunzel's castle. So that's what we're going to look at today. Before we start, I want to point out that theoretically, this process, this skill could be used on any fairy tale tower. So, I mean, this is, we're showing Rapunzel's tower, but if, you know, Sleeping Beauty needs to be rescued or Cinderella had a castle, I guess you could really put a window in any castle or tower using these steps. Um, theoretically, any solids. So, but we're going to frame this as Rapunzel's castle. So here we have a tower. Uh, this tower is uh, Rapunzel's tower, like I said. And if we come in here, I'm just going to zoom in here and take a look. If I turn on x-ray, I can see there's actually two walls to this tower. There's an inside and outside. So when we're punching a hole, we're not just putting a hole in one curved surface. We actually want to punch a hole straight through to uh, the center of this, this solid here, both sides, inside and outside. So that's going to be important because one of the things I could do, so say I came in here, uh, one thing I could do is I could turn on my hidden lines. I have a shortcut key for that. Uh, you could always come up here to view hidden geometry, toggle that on and off. But what I could do is I could come in here and I could just kind of draw a shape that represents the window I want to put on here and come around like this and just snap to the lines, the hidden lines that I already have here. And what that will do is it will break that geometry. So when I erase these lines right here, it'll give me a hole, but I can see what I did was I just cut a hole in the shell, right? So just, just the outside surface, the inside surface is still here untouched. Um, I could go through the process right now of connecting the interior and exterior geometry. I can make my way around and kind of try to close this up and I could make that work, but it's messy to say the least. So we're going to look at a better way to do that. We're going to use, I'm going to turn my hidden geometry back off. We're going to use solid tools to punch a window right here in the top of the tower. So I'm going to start by making a cutter. I'm going to make the shape that's going to represent the window. So I'm going to use my red and blue axes to just draw a vertical rectangle, real simple. And I'm going to create an arc. I'm going to grab my arc tool. I want this nice soft arc, right, half round circle right here at the top. So I'm just going to pick a point and come straight across. You can see as you start to drag, what uh, the arc is going to try to do is stay tangent to that first side. So that's a nice smooth piece coming off that vertical line. If I go straight across, tangent to tangent is going to give me a vertical half circle parallel to those two lines. So if I click there and click a second time, it automatically gets that. So I can delete these extra pieces. And now this is the shape of my window. To use solid tools to punch a hole in the tower, though, I do need this to be a solid. So I'm going to use push-pull to just drag that shape through. And we got a nice loaf-shaped cutter. Before I go any further, before I make this a solid group that I can use as a cutting piece, um, I'm going to clean it up a little bit. And that's these lines right here that I want to get rid of. This is not a bad thing. This is the transition from the surface to the arc. But if I cut this into the tower, the hole I cut is going to actually have these breaks as well. So what I'm going to do is before I make this a group, I'm going to use the erase tool along with the modifier key option on Mac, control on Windows, to just get rid of those two lines. Now, when I triple click and make that a group, I'm going to cut this nice smooth arc all the way across when I put it into the tower. The tower, speaking of which, is not currently a solid. I'm going to triple click, right click, and make that a group as well. And you can see up here, as I make these, both the cutter and the tower have turned into solid groups. Uh, this happened because I made sure as I was building this and this, I built solid geometry. If you're not sure, if I'm not sure if that was good solid geometry or not, you could always use solid tools uh, to check it, make sure that, that your geometry is good. You don't have any loose geometry or uh, bad faces, missing faces, anything like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab my cutting tool. I'm going to grab it right by the midpoint of the front. And I'm going to align that with the green axes right here, right up towards the top of the tower, so right about there. I'm actually using a line that's not currently visible. If I toggle my hidden geometry on again, you can see that snapped right to that front line right there. 
even though it wasn't turned on. Um, SketchUp will allow you to inference hidden geometry. So a good point in case you ever get that situation where you're snapping to points that you can't see, just because it's turned off doesn't mean you can't snap to it. Now I'm gonna, just for my own sake, I'm gonna use move to just kinda slide it out a little bit on the green axes. I don't want it super like flush like it was. I actually want it sticking out a little bit so I can, you know, because I want to. <laughs> that's, that's why I did that. All right, so what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna use solid tools to cut this shape from the tower. I'm gonna to go to view and turn on my tool palettes, solid tools. And I have a bunch of tools here. The one I'm actually gonna use, so there's a couple ways, I could actually use a few of these to make this happen. I'm going to use trim. What trim is gonna do is cut the first selection from the second selection and leave the first selection unmodified. Let me show you what that, I mean by that. So when I click here, it cuts the hole, and this piece right here is actually unchanged. This is nice because I can use this same cutting piece over and over again. Say I wanted this, this hole cut you know, every 90 degrees around the top of this tower, I could cut it, use the top as a point to rotate, rotate 90 degrees, cut again, rotate 90 degrees, cut again, 90 degrees, cut again. So I could actually use this cutter again and again. But in this case, that did exactly what I needed that cutting piece, put my hole in there, and oh, sure enough, look, there she is. And there's our fair maiden. Uh, Rapunzel is now free to let her hair down from the top of the tower. So this skill builder focused on the solid tool functionality, which is found in both SketchUp Pro and SketchUp Shop. This could be done in SketchUp Free as well, but what you'd have to do is ungroup that geometry and actually have it merge and then use intersect on the faces that cross. You'd end up deleting a bunch of geometry, but you could get the same effect. It would just be a few more steps. Solid tools, however, makes it real quick, real easy, and especially when you have repeating geometry that needs to cut, something like trim can save you a ton of time. So hopefully you like that. Personally, I like that somebody came along with such a specific request and asked for us to help Rapunzel get out of the tower. If you did like it, go ahead and leave a like. If you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe and you'll be notified next time we post a video. Most important though, give us a comment. Let us know about a topic you'd like to see explored or if you have a specific instance like this you want to see us dive into. Like making these videos, like it a lot more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.